I will begin my statement today by bringing you, to your attention a serious security incident that took place on the 24th of September near Bainska village of Zvechan municipalities in northern Kosovo. Early in the morning that day, a Kosovo police officer was killed and two others were injured at the entrance of the village, which has been blocked by two vehicles. Over the course of the day and into the evening, Kosovo police and heavily armed elements engaged in gunfire exchanges, resulting in four deaths and a number of arrests. The Kosovo police seized a significant number of vehicles, military equipment, and weapons. UNMIC joined the international community in unequivocally condemning the incident and the tragic loss of life and calling for restraint. It is essential that the investigations currently underway provide the opportunity to factually document these events and hold perpetrators accountable. The major events on 24th of September exacerbated an already deteriorating security environment, characterized by an atmosphere of mutual suspicion and contradictory perceptions touching much of the population, especially in northern Kosovo and among Kosovo Serb communities elsewhere in Kosovo. Mr. President, in the days, weeks, and even months leading up to the 24th September, political and security tensions in northern Kosovo steadily rose in the absence of tangible progress in the EU-facilitated dialogue. The high-level meeting held on the 14th of September in Brussels produced no consensus on the sequencing for the implementation of prior agreements. This was, yet again, an opportunity missed to engage constructively towards a program for the implementation of the parties' respective commitments under the agreements made in Brussels and Ohrid earlier this year. Both sides have exchanged inflammatory public allegations, damaging the fragile communication channels between the communities in Kosovo and between political leaders in Belgrade and Pristina. During my interaction with a wide array of interlocutors, including municipal, religious, civil society organization, and business leaders, the most common sentiments I have encountered are frustration and concern caused by an uncertain future. Tensions and anxiety across Kosovo reported particularly from members of Kosovo Serb communities have been fueled by divisive rhetoric narratives. Rather than stoking tensions through political messages directed at one group, elected leaders bear responsibility for addressing the security needs and broader socioeconomic concerns of all segments of society, regardless of ethnic, linguistic, or political background. Mr. President, setbacks like the boycott by the Kosovo Serbs of the 23rd local elections in northern Kosovo where they represent the majority of the population. Ensuring questions of adequate political representation and the terrible, yes, the terrible violence on the 29th of May that led to serious injuries of 93 K4 personnel as well as civilians represent grave dangers to achieving long-term peace and stability. The current political impasse, with its impact on the security and well-being of the population, can only be overcome through compromise that should be worked out in the dialogue between Belgrade and Pristina. De-escalatory measures are critical to reduce tensions, and in this regard, I share the hopes of many 
that the outcome of the EU and US-led meetings held separately in Pristina and Belgrade on the 21st of October will place the dialogue back on a forward path with firm commitment by both sides to implement the escalatory measures and the proposals set forth during the meeting. This includes recommitment by both parties to fully implement all previous dialogue agreements. Accordingly, work on the establishment of the association community of third majority municipalities should begin without delay or preconditions alongside all other essential agreements. We should keep in mind that failure of achieving political compromise will continue to adversely impact the well-being of ordinary people, yes, ordinary people, including their ability to receive basic services and realize their socioeconomic potential. In this regard, it is crucial to note that delays in the implementation of dialogue agreement led to the postponement of an EU donor conference envisaged in the implementation annex of the February agreement, which would have likely attracted substantially economic support and investment opportunities. Mr. President, we have often spoken during Council sessions about the positive ways in which sustainable political agreements impact people's lives, even when they come at a cost. Perhaps too rarely we talk about the even greater cost that accrues from not reaching agreements. Here, I'm speaking of the cost to all communities, be they Serbs, Albanians, or others residing in different parts of Kosovo and the entire region. Tension, isolation, and growing lack of trust in political leaders to address people's most immediate interests and legitimate grievances witnessed these past months, and worse, the resort to violence and intimidation by those of ill will threaten the hard-won gains achieved through the EU-facilitated dialogue. Responsible leadership and compromise are required to return to a more productive political process. We know the maxim that there is no sustainable development without peace, and no peace without sustainable development. It could not be stressed enough that regional cooperation and integration initiatives in all forms should be welcomed and prioritized in order to contribute to a more productive dialogue. Peace, prosperity, progress, sustainability, and connectivity were some of the main themes highlighted during the General Assembly. High-level week in September and during the Berlin Process Summit held last week in Tirana. Today, in this august body, I believe that it is of the utmost importance that the international community urges both Pristina and Belgrade to foster purposeful and concerted actions in line with these main priorities, including the observation that no single leader or actor can expect to go it alone in overcoming the present global challenges. Mr. President, I have already pointed out in my statement of April this year, and it should be repeated today, the need for clear and continuous communication with the public on issues affecting their livelihoods, health, and human rights, issues such land expropriation and the freedom of movement of people and goods, including across the administrative boundary line. The work of rule of law institutions must be anchored in the human rights framework and should be clearly and publicly explained and communicated to avoid misperceptions and ensure equality of all before the law. 
I have welcomed the adoption of a law regulating the application process for the status of conflict-related sexual violence survivors by the Assembly of Kosovo. I would also encourage authorities to consider the recommendation of the UN Special Rapporteur on truth, justice, reparation, and guarantees of non-recurrence in this regard. Following continued ad advocacy by UNMIC, UN agencies, and civil society groups for the inclusion of the UN Convention on the Rights of Persons with Disabilities in the Constitution, we welcome the Constitutional Court's decision of the 1st of August this year that paves the way for the inclusion of international human rights norms on the rights of persons with disability within the Kosovo legal framework. Mr. President, this year we mark the fifth anniversary of UNMIC's trust building agenda. Despite a track record of success in strengthening dialogue, social cohesion, and resilience at the grassroots level, the environment has become more challenging this past year. Nonetheless, we remain strongly committed to continue to work with our partners from all communities in Kosovo to foster communication and understanding among people. Doing so, nurture the ground for acceptance of the difficult but essential compromises necessary to achieve progress in the dialogue at the leadership le level. As announced six months ago, the Barabar Center was launched with support from UNMIC and the Pristina Municipality. Partnership at its best. Used in both official languages in Kosovo, Albanian and Serbian, the word Barabar means equality and fairness, and we need equality and fairness. The center is a safe space in the heart of Pristina, where people from all walks of life and all communities can meet to freely deliberate and transcend divisive narratives. Since its opening in May this year, the center has organized more than 40, yes, 40, 40 multi-ethnic events, demonstrating that even during challenging times, it is possible and indeed desirable to get the people together. To advance both women and youth peace and security agenda, the mission continues to support women-led civil society organization and encourage involvement of youth and women leaders in decision-making at all levels. We support initiatives aiming to promote active and meaningful participation of women in political processes and to integrate gender perspective into the normalization process between Belgrade and Pristina. We will also continue to support young people, including through the annual UN Youth Assembly in Kosovo. The fifth Youth Assembly this year was held at the height of the political tension. Still, more than 150 youth leaders from across Kosovo and the region came together and constructively addressed critical issues, including combating misinformation and hate speech, youth decision-making, and stopping domestic violence just to name few. We thank the UN Kosovo team for their close cooperation in this regard. Together with our partners, the mission ensures equal access to justice by improving courtrooms infrastructure, providing free legal assistance and representation to more than 2,000 people from all communities throughout Kosovo and offering interpretation services. We will continue to do so. I wish to take this opportunity to commend the resilience of local actors, including UNMIC partners, committed women, men, and young people from all communities in Kosovo who, 
despite divisive narratives and challenging realities, work tirelessly to bring more understanding between their communities. Mr. President, I would like to reiterate UNMIC's support for the EU-facilitated dialogue with a sense of urgency in light of the instability that has characterized the current reporting period. We are committed to supporting all voices, rejecting zero-sum polarization in favor of compromise and collaboration. We will continue our trust-building work, even though we often hear that trust is at its lowest level at this moment. But our answer was, is, and remains, if not now, when? Let me say this again, and let me say it very clearly. Dialogue is the only way forward.